Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, playing Cyberpunk 2077 on an old computer. This is the $1,500 Cadillac build I did in 2017, featuring the i7 7700K and an upgraded graphics card because that machine was originally built with a GTX 1070. We instead here have an upgraded RTX 2070. We're gonna be playing at 1440p ultra detail. Yes, on a six-year-old computer. There's a playlist in the description below. If Cyberpunk is not your thing, that's fine. I have other games that I've done this with. You're about to see live gameplay. Cyberpunk has a built-in benchmark, but the built-in benchmark does not reflect the real-world performance. In fact, the built-in benchmark runs pretty well on this machine, and it runs fairly stutter-free. The game does not. Spoiler alert. One of the problems with benchmark charts and numbers on the screen and canned benchmarks, like Cyberpunk's canned benchmark, is they do not always adequately reflect how well the game actually plays. In general, canned benchmarks are really good for graphics card testing. They generally tend to be fairly poor for CPU testing and for overall system comparisons and testing. If you want to know how well RAM speed differences or a CPU upgrade or some other change or overclocking makes, canned benchmarks don't always show the difference. You sometimes have to do live gameplay. I have over 300 hours into Cyberpunk myself. I've beaten the game twice, including a full run through. I've played this on a wide variety of hardware. So the commentary that you're about to hear, this is not just music set to the game. I'm gonna be narrating this here in just a minute. The commentary comes from experience of having played this game on a variety of hardware. Does it run? Yes. Is it ideal? No. But if any of you have already played Cyberpunk, you probably figured that part out all by yourself. The question is, how playable is it? And is there anything you could do to make it play better on this CPU? Or is it just ultimately a limitation of a 7700K and you need something better? We're going to talk about that as you see some gameplay. And I didn't just play for five minutes. I played through several missions throughout the map. I played for about an hour so that I could see whether I was immersed in the game. Did I forget I was benchmarking or was I having too much fun shooting the place up? So with that being said, grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into this. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Cyberpunk 2077 is an interesting game with a storied history. Development began in 2016 after the release of the expansion of The Witcher 3 by CD Projekt Red, released in 2020 to critical acclaim and then great deals of complaints due to bugs and problems. Most of which were on the console, the PC did have its share of problems, however, I did not have a problem playing this at launch. In fact, I've done two full run-throughs of this game. I've got about 370, 380 hours of time in the game at this point. And I have published two very detailed review videos, one spoiler-free and one with all the spoilers talking about the end of the game and everything else. Those will be linked down in the description below if you'd like to watch them. I don't do a lot of game reviews, but I was quite proud of those because I had a lot to say. Regarding performance, uh, this ran much better than I expected. However, it is worth noting that this was tested in February of 2023, more than two years post-release. Patch 1.6, not the launch version. FSR was running. I was not using DLSS, but as you can see on the screen, the performance is not bad. This is 1440p ultra detail, ray tracing turned off because ray tracing on at 1440p on a 2070 would be a slideshow. It might even be a negative frame rate. It would be pretty bad. Now the frame time graph is not super smooth here and I am definitely not doing the most demanding content. I just loaded up a random save file and started running around and playing. I did multiple side missions. I did several of the random encounters on the streets. I drove, you'll see that here in a minute. I shot up some enemies. I did a variety of things and you'll be able to watch that real time performance. The actual frame rate 
was kind of disappointing. It does get better than here. At the moment, you're seeing 38 frames per second, 39. The average, the rolling average at the moment is 44. It's the middle white number on the screen. And then the rolling 1% low is 33. After all of the gameplay, which to be fair, included driving through the city and driving out towards the country, ended up with an average of 52. But averages are deceptive because there's times it'll be 30 and times it'll be 70. And so somewhere in the middle comes an average, but the question is, do you want 30 frames per second? Well, the truth of the matter is 30 frames per second actually can be just fine if it is a smooth and consistent 30 frames per second. If that frame time graph, the real time bar you see running underneath the frame rate, if that is butter smooth and flat, then typically a game will be pretty nice even if the frame rate itself is not awesome. It's good here, but it's not great. You see it spiking, and in other spots, it will spike more than this. But then it'll also get smoother as we're driving around, not actually engaging in enemies. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of Cyberpunk, the launch version, playing on an i7-7700K or similar. At least, I couldn't find any searching through my old benchmark files. I played through this game on my personal gaming PC at home, which was an i9-9900K. I played at 1440p ultra-wide ray tracing on, but I also used an RTX 3090. I initially tried a 2070 Super, and that was sad and depressing and disappointing. And then I tried a 3070, and a 3070 at 1440p ultra-wide with ray tracing on and DLSS on, medium detail, was play a bowl, but I was only getting about 45 frames per second. Once I switched to the 3090, that solved the problem and gave me a whopping 65 frames per second. But again, this was with the launch game, not with the game as it exists in 2023. I expect you to do a little bit better today. An interesting observation is that we're using all four cores at the moment, but this game does not take effective use of hyperthreading, at least not in this scenario. It would be a little better if we had six or eight cores, and I can attest to that having played it on my personal machine, which has multiple monitors, and when I play games, I usually have a lot of other stuff going on. I'm usually watching YouTube videos or a Twitch stream on my second monitor. I don't close tasks in the background. My task tray is full of 15 items. There's a reason I have 64 gigs of RAM in my personal system. I really do use it. My typical memory usage on my machine at home tends to run between 35 to 45 gigabytes of active use memory, not counting cached memory. When I went to play Cyberpunk, again, disclaimer, launch version, not the current version. When I went to play Cyberpunk on that machine, I had to close things. I had to close Chrome. I couldn't be watching a video on my second monitor. If I did, the game stuttered. I kid you not. Playing a, a YouTube video on my second monitor and leaving everything open in the test tray and leaving my system as normal created these really annoying micro stutters that as you were trying to play the game were just really, really annoying. Again, that was then. It probably is genuinely better now. They really have done a lot of work to patch the game and improve things. In fact, here you're going to see a nice driving sequence. I'll go driving for a bit. I'm going to go find another uh, place to engage in combat, some open world enemies. And you saw me using the cyber warfare stuff earlier. You'll see me actually using the gun and shooting things later on in this. Now, this is not ray tracing, but they definitely have done a nice job with the graphics. Those, of course, are not ray traced uh, water effects on the ground, but it's still very, very pretty. It is prettier with ray tracing. And this is definitely one of those games where I think ray tracing makes a difference. I actually don't think ray tracing matters for most games until it sort of becomes a standard always on feature. It's always just gonna be a gimmick or an add on because they have to develop the game without ray tracing enabled. This was the first game that made me go, yeah, I need RT on, absolutely, lutely because there are some sequences. I've mentioned this before, I'll mention it again. The sequence when you're playing with the side uh, missions with River, where you're riding in the pickup truck as a passenger, and you're just having a conversation, it is so film noir, it just drips with, with charm and character and environment. It is absolutely amazing. The rain falling on the windshield, looking out the side, looking at the neon lights reflecting through the windshield that is wet, it is gorgeous. The very first time I played through that sequence and you're just having an interactive conversation with Ritter, and you're not even driving. I mean, the, 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 the NPC is driving, you're riding. And I'm sitting there in the dark, and of course I had my second monitor off because I'm only playing on my single 34 inch ultra wide monitor with ray tracing ultra on my 3090. And I'm just sitting there in awe going, 
I'm playing a movie. This is amazing. And I think people's experiences with cyberpunk vary tremendously depending upon how they approach it. If they run at medium detail with ray tracing off on, on, on a standard system and they just go around shooting everything and they skip the dialogue because, ah, stupid, boring, dialogue, dumb, we're just gonna play the game. They have a such a completely different experience than to somebody who gets into the role playing. Somebody who gets into the game and immerses themselves into the lore and cares about the choices of their character and treats it like a real role playing experience. The game can't, if I'm going to be blunt, and I said this in the review, spoiler alert, Cyberpunk as a game is really, it's just average and mediocre. The actual gunplay, the, the, the melee combat, the cyber combat, it's kind of average. This is not a special game in terms of game mechanics. There's nothing here that's particularly, whoa, this is amazing, this is a new kind of game I've never played before. Eh, it's okay. But the storyline, the characters, if you care, if you're the kind of person who wants to get into that world, you can really immerse yourself into it. The only downside is the game never quite lived up to expectations. Yes, I deliberately ran over that person. I'm so sorry. Sorry, not sorry. If you, the problem is the, the, game, the world is very empty. I commented on this in the review. 75% of the open world has nothing to do in it. The minute you deviate off of this scripted storyline and missions, it's like walking around in a ghost town. Yeah, there's people in cars. It looks alive, but it isn't. There's nothing there. They've added a few side missions and tweaked a few things throughout the patch sequences, but they really haven't done anything to deal with the fact that if you go driving around in parts of the city that do not have an active mission, or you go driving out in the countryside and the solar farms... There's a couple of missions out there, but you know, once you've done them, there's nothing else there. The, the trash field, the... It's so empty. It's absolutely amazing how unbelievably empty this game world is. Games like Grand Theft Auto V did a much better job of providing you things to do in the world. Now, to be sure, when you drive around in Grand Theft Auto V, if you just drive around, it's randomly generated cars and there's nothing going on. But there's a lot more side activities in GTA V than there are in this game. And the side activities in this game are unfortunately deeply, deeply repetitive. In fact, here we're CPU bottleneck. Take a look at this. We are at 70% CPU usage. The graphics card came off the 100%. So a faster graphics card really wouldn't make any difference here. We're deep into the hyper-threading. Look at the frame time graph. Look how awful that frame time graph is. The frame time graph is bouncing all over the place. I mean, yes, the frame rate looks okay. The 1% low looks okay. Bloody heck, this taxi's just trying to run me over. 83%. We just hit... This is a hyper-threaded CPU. Hyper-threaded CPUs in games should not hit 83%. If they do, you don't have enough CPU power. And this is not a demanding portion of the game. If I'm being completely blunt, you get into some of the more complicated missions where you have to... Pardon me. We're going to have to disable this thing here. When you get into heavier combat scenarios, whoa, it's just going to be... Uh, you can play this game on an i7-7700K. It looks good from the footage I'm showing you. <sighs> Don't. Please, dear Lord. I mean, you're going to run into issues where it's just all over the place. I, I would highly recommend a minimum of a six core CPU for this game, and that's with nothing else going on. If you really want decent performance, you need an eight core CPU, and a modern one at that. I don't mean an, uh, a Ryzen 7 1700, which is okay, but pretty slow in the per core department. I would much more recommend, in fact, you can see the part of the reason the frame rate got higher here. Notice we're at 130 frames a second. The map does this, unfortunately, sometimes. So I would strongly recommend at least a Ryzen 7 3700X, an i9-9900K, or similar. Um, you know, even a more modern 6-core CPU, a Ryzen 5 5600X, an i5-12400 uh, would be okay. Wouldn't be ideal, but it, it would be okay. A i7-10700F would be lovely. 
uh, 4.6 gigahertz, 8 cores, 16 threads would be just fine for this game. And you can get stuff like that now for pretty cheap. And if you've got an older Ryzen system, keep in mind, Ryzen 7 5700X CPUs, 8 core, 16 thread Zen 3, about $180 at the moment on Amazon or Newegg, plus comes with a free game, at least at the time I'm recording this. That's really inexpensive. If you've got a Ryzen 7 1700, it should be upgraded to a 5700X. The difference in general Windows computing performance is night and day. Here we're again, we're back up to 75% CPU usage. We're using six threads and we really could be using more. That frame time graph would be dramatically smoothed out if we had a better CPU. I mean, it's, it's playable, it's okay. And I think this right here is a perfect example of why I get so many comments from people saying, my eight year old computer's just fine. What are you talking about? I don't need to upgrade, my machine's fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, mm. It's fine, it works, but go play this on a Ryzen 7 5700X. Then come back and play it on this and tell me it's, and I'm doing air quotes here, fine. If you can't afford, afford better, fine, you know, huh, no pun intended. If you can't afford better, by all means, go for it. But yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It, it is what it is. It runs. It's just not ideal. In any case, I'm just going to cut it off here. I kept playing for a while. I mean, it is playable. Here's what's hilarious. It is absolutely playable. It's just... Once you've played this on better, this is terrible. It's like, it's one of those things where you don't know how good, you know, chocolate ice cream is if you've only had vanilla, or you don't know how good vanilla is if you've only had chocolate, or, <clears throat> excuse me, chocolate vanilla swirl, because, you know, that's... If you come up to one of those soft serve machines and it has chocolate and vanilla and you don't do the swirl, we just can't be friends because that's like a literal requirement. I think it might even be a law. Maybe not, but okay. You know, if you're getting the soft serve vanilla because you're putting it with uh, warm apple pie, fine. You get the vanilla because chocolate ice cream and apple pie is dumb. But if you're just eating it as ice cream, then by all means, get the swirl. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent now. This is, I just keep playing and we don't want this video to be 25 minutes long. Let's go to the conclusion. Well, there you have it. For everybody who has watched all the way to this point, thank you so much for being here. A bonus gold star for you. This game runs better than it did at launch. It absolutely runs on this machine, if not perfectly. As I noted, it's not going to run better just because you have a faster graphics card to trim the detail down. The frame rate will go up slightly, but the stutters are not gonna be fixed with your graphics card. The, the stutters, and the overall limitations are the fact that Cyberpunk 2077 really was not designed for a four core, eight thread CPU. If you overclocked this to five gigahertz, it would help a little bit, but that's not going to redress the balance. Cyberpunk shows a noticeable improvement on six and eight cores, it really does. I spent most of my personal playtime through the game on an i9 9900K, and even then it wasn't perfect, although in fairness, that was closer to launch. It's been patched and optimized and updated since then. But I had to close everything in the background. I've got multiple monitors and I normally game and I've got stuff going on, watching a YouTube video or doing things. And I had to shut all that down in order to get really nice, smooth performance on my 9900K. On a modern i9 13900K, butter smooth performance, multiple windows, taskbars, videos, multiple monitors, everything running, it doesn't care the extra performance of the modern CPUs really does make a difference. So if you only have a 7700K, yeah, it'll do it. But you're really pushing what this CPU can do. And it's one of those situations where Person A is going to say, what are you talking about, man? See, it runs. It's fine. It's like 60 frames a second. There's no problem. It's playable. It's controllable. You don't need to upgrade. And person B, who, to be completely honest, is me, is going to say, what's wrong with you? That was terrible. There were frame starters all over the place. The performance was terrible. It was marginally controllable. It was laggy. And that's just not a good experience. You're both right. You're both right. Person A is right, person B is right. It is playable, it is controllable, you could play it on this machine. It is objectively better on a faster machine. 
this game is a good representation of how if you play period appropriate games, stuff from 2018, 2019 and earlier, no, you don't need to upgrade. But if you wanna play Hogwarts Legacy, you need a new computer. I had a request to play Hogwarts Legacy on this. No, I'm, I'm just, no, no. <laughs> that needs a new machine. In any case, thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Check out the playlist down below. Watch the other videos on this and suggest what other games, not Hogwarts Legacy, or hardware you would like to see tested in this format. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well.